commence full just, nerd freak out in just, five, four. Just turn around. <laughs> just turn around. Just turn around. Ah! Wow. Holy. Oh, uh, what do we look at first? Why were we downstairs looking at cars that Brian could own? <laughs> Dude. Look at this. Good. All right. Uh, Where do you start? Do Let's go. Let's go here. Yeah, let's just start from one end to the other. You can't do What? Wow. What are, we don't have here. Here. what are the symptoms of uh, cardiac arrest? I think I'm having them. Yo, this Holy is... Holy shit. I wonder like what level car guy we are that we get way more excited over things that look like they originated from street cars over like, I mean, just look to the left. Like, I know. I am just pointing at things that look right. like street cars. No, I, these, things are, like, these things are amazing, but like, it's yeah. just, it's just, it's I too think, far I away. I think it's really, it's the rally, it's the rally in us. Yeah. Germany, we're gonna come to all Abbey. that driving. We've done how many hours of driving have we done? All of the hours we were just talking about. We did like 10 out, we did 10 hours of driving in less than 24 hours, <laughs> over a thousand kilometers because of this guy. I want to go to Ingolstadt, I want to go to Berlin. Come on, you're in Germany, we don't come here all the time. Stop I agree. Like Are we getting a running CQ here? Uh, <laughs> I was hoping someone here could tell me how to finish oh, it. Oh my god, <laughs> so you guys might remember him. He was the right. one who came by the shop. Well, what would you bring over last time? With a TT Club Spurt. Since we're out here in Germany, gave him a ring, and uh, he gave us the keys to this. So it's also not so bad, I think. Yeah, no, not it's bad, not bad. It's not a five cylinder, so yeah, not five cylinder, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, no electric turbo, but yeah. We've been here for like a total of 15 minutes, and oh, too shabby, huh? Okay, <laughs> that's how they take care. I of I was uh, hoping for an RS3, but you know, wow, this this will work fine. I haven't been in one of these since the first generation. It's actually a pretty trippy color. Yeah. It really yeah. is, it looks yeah. Like a flat gray, but it has but it's got a pearl. it's got sparkle into it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you got the V10. Car. Yeah, Scott is being a little conservative right now. It's it's like it's like he's at mom's house. <laughs> I said you're being a little conservative right now. It's like you're at yeah, you're so, at mom's sorry, house. Peasants. So oh, <laughs> hold on, we'll get in the RS6. We're, we're good. We're good. This thing too. God, we're just surrounded by greatness right now. It's so like low key rad. It's got 285 squared, like massive tires. Look at the front arches. They're so big and aggressive. 285s, twin turbo V8. It goes 305 kilometers an hour with yeah. this package, Stop. which is, it, that converts to exactly a, a lot of miles per That's hour. Fast as shit. 605 horsepower in a wagon. Dude, why can't we get these in the States? Uh, yeah. There's just something really cool about fast wagons. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You yeah. can't explain it. Some people don't get it, yeah. but it's sick. <laughs> Here with Timo from hey, Audi. How here, again? how's hey, it going, Timo? Good, Great fine, to meet you. you. Uh, Timo just drove us over in this beautiful machine to the uh, Audi Tradition Center. That's right. Yeah. Where uh, this is kind of the the secret vault. Yes, this of, is the official part of the Audi Tradition collection. Okay. So. Oh look at you know what I don't even I don't even uh, whatever you stay you stay with that <laughs> Who thing. Who knew jabronis like us would get such a red carpet treatment? When we Seriously, just show up at look at the just the transportation game alone. How long did it take that one apart? How long? <laughs> it already does the run. <laughs> Doing the tie rods on it's gonna take you six months. We're here it was basically like the secret stash of vintage Audi stuff, right? Yeah, the secret stash. So there's yeah. the huge museum over there where they have a ton of amazing stuff, and this is the stuff everyone can't see. So many doors, so you know so it's protected. Many, yeah. Uh, Boom.
to explain this. Yeah. This, is, this is not it. Scott, do you have a picture of your car? Um, what? Can you pull up a picture of your CQ really quick? I just want to ask these guys something. Um, I want to solve situation. once and for good. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's what have that conversation. Let's have that conversation. M? Yeah, you're, like you're, you're asking me. To, I'm like really excited about all. Okay, this. fine. We'll do it and later. You're asking me to look at my car that doesn't run. That's just me. I just you know right, here, for here, the here, internet. Here, what here, color here. is this car? What? This what color? What color? Oh bloody hell! What does it look like? Yeah, it looks like like a pretty blue it's color. Blue, blue cream, huh? What? Blue what? cream? What? It's blue. Uh, they <laughs> both said blue. Yeah. Edit the other part out. It's blue. It's called Lago Blue. The actual color code is blue. In conclusion, <laughs> still blue. It's blue. Ish green. The German said blue. You heard it from the man himself. The Everyone thinks it's green. Greenish, right? Blue, blue green. Yeah. <laughs> We now look at the rest no, of the we, can, we can move on. We can move on. <laughs> we store our cars, which we use more often for events, press, mm. PR stuff, marketing site, whatever mm. it is, or exhibitions. You see, it looks like a little bit kind of messy here because yeah. there's some cars staying around. This isn't here. messy. You Green haven't seen our place. This would be a pristine showroom for us. Yeah. yeah. This would be the cleanest our building yeah. ever was. Well, let's take a look around, man. I mean, I mean yeah, right yeah, off the yeah, bat. Yeah. The second you come through the door, the Iroquois This is how many miles this is actual cars. street dreams right here. Depends, um, street dreams street are made of these. Street dreams are made of these. These. Oh my lord! Now we have just three colors, like the blue one, the red one, and the green one. And the white one is just we've been busy this morning with the white one, so this is still in transport coming back here. So can we can we pop the hood on any of these things? Can we look yes, under the hood? Or anything? Of course. I never no. knew they made it in blue. What this? This is green, Ron. <laughs> Okay, so this is the big, best example for being green or blue. Yeah, yeah, that's green. This is that's, green, that's green, this is that's blue. blue. Yeah. But that's black. Thank you. That Thank was you. blue, actually. <laughs> that's blue. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. So this, uh... Man. I love that this is factory. You have an exter a massive external wastegate. Dude, that's that, a massive factory that's turbo. That's from the factory. Basically... As you know, the Sport Quadro has been produced just in a very limited number mm -hmm. of cars. It was produced um, for one reason, and this was to homologate the Sport Quadro in Group B rally. Mm -hmm. So there was a limited number of cars, being 200 cars, and they were produced a little bit more, like 214 cars. And some of them were used to prepare rally cars out of these mm -hmm. chassis numbers, and the other cars were, were open for customers to sell. In an attempt to rein in automakers in production-based racing, many sanctioning bodies require that the car on track somewhat matches the car on the showroom floor. To meet these regulations, power-hungry manufacturers will often produce very limited runs of heavily modified versions of a production car. To satisfy the homologation approval process in the loosest terms, these row-going race cars are known as homologation specials. Some of the greatest production cars ever built were born of this process. A few standout examples of iconic homologation cars include the Plymouth Superbird, built for NASCAR, the BMW E30 built for Group A, and Nissan's Mighty R32 GTR destined for the Japanese and Australian Touring Car Series. But without question, Rally's spectacular and tragic Group B era birthed the wildest ones, including the Ford RS200, Metro MG6 R4, Porsche 959, and, of course, the Audi Sport Quattro. You can't speak about like a special history of these cars because they are all very special because so limited. Mm -hmm. For example, the red one was a car which was um, like a regular company car in Audi running here before in the factory. It was always in the factory and it went and it stayed here and it was for, Audi, for the Audi Motorsport division back in the days. Mm -hmm. It was like a career car, like you know, driving from this place to the other place for a business trip or whatever. It was used like a daily driver. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah, special. You just, just picture this. It's 1987. You work for Audi Motorsport. They're like, you know what, why don't you take the company car out for lunch? <laughs> this is the most sports quattros I think uh, yeah. any of us have seen in one place. I don't even know what to say. I don't even, yeah, I'm not leaving. This is sick to see an S2. So, yeah, so this is what came in Europe. You could actually get the Audi Q Quattro in a performance model, which had a 20 valve turbo engine in it. Unlike my car, which came with just a 20 valve 
non-turbo engine, which wasn't as exciting. This one also came stock five lug. The uh, ones in the US came four lug, which would be probably the same as what that one is. Came with a different front bumper, came with a different hood, which is what I changed everything over to. And I'm sure this one runs. I would say that it probably does. It's also immaculately clean. It's yeah. Like, like it looks like it just rolled off yeah. the showroom. If that's my like absolute dream car, that's like the actual affordable dream car. Like right. I can't afford one of those uh, anymore, yeah. but like I may be able to pull one of these off one day. And maybe I shouldn't tell the internet this, but as of last year, you can now import these. Yeah, cut that part out. <laughs> Don't let them know. If that's my like absolute dream car, that's like the actual affordable dream car. Like right. I can't afford one of those uh, anymore, yeah. but like I may be able to pull one of these off one day. This car was built in conjunction with Porsche. Oh. So okay. you have five by 130. Uh, wow. Yes, yeah, so you have no five by 130 hubs. Porsche brakes and obviously Porsche wheels and then the manifold and I think the uh, management was also done by Porsche. So if we pop the hood on this, it actually says Porsche under the hood. Oh, sick, I didn't know that. See? See, I wasn't expecting- It's when all my loves come together with this car. I wasn't expecting the intake manifold to have anything to do with Porsche. You know the one thing I noticed from your car? This is the radiator that they blocked off, right? Like yeah, that's, the, that's the auxiliary radiator. A lot of guys don't run them because they run bigger intercoolers, mm -hmm. but that is how it was factory. So factory, you had the aux radiator, and then you had the main radiator. But a lot of guys will run bigger intercoolers, so like my intercooler comes up to like there, so I'm just pop it out. Well, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I'm gonna just stare at this and that for like the next five hours. <laughs> before Audi was joined to Audi. Yes. Wow, one, okay. One ring of the name. Basically. Cool, nice. So, I love this This color combo, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's got it's, it's, the black very, with the very nice and a very sporty car. dark red wheels that matches yeah. the interior and also has a ton of trim that matches it all. Yeah. It's really, it's a really well thought out, like nice looking car. Yeah. Oh man, it's part of the car cane rehab reduction. This was uh, this was stage one of your uh, your recovery, yeah, was getting rid of seen it with the Euro bumpers, I probably would have kept it. Look how nice and trim that looks. It looks like a totally different car. These are um, remanufactured cars. These are not original cars. Mm -hmm. We have some original cars or partly original cars in our museum. But um, these cars are remanufactured. But you'll actually drive these and cars. These are able to That's drive. Cool. These are drivable cars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you imagine running the Nurburgring in one of those? No, no. And how fast would these go? They go up to 330 kilometers an hour. No, absolutely not. Okay, just go take a look at the safety. Like the. There's, yeah. This is pre seatbelt, so you just would get thrown yeah, out. No seatbelt. So yeah. The safety was that Your you would be thrown like out. Further enough but, away because from the, the car. Because yeah. the minute it hits something, it explodes into a ball fire. But basically, basically, this was one way of thinking back in the days. It's like if you separate the driver from the car, it's safer yeah. than staying in the car. But from our point of view today, no seat belts, small steering wheel, fuel cell around yeah. the driver. The fuel, it's right yeah. there. That's it. That's the bladder. This was like when men were really men. This is amazing. This is, this is one of the nicest cars we have, I think, personally. I love this. It's an Audi 50, 50 yeah. 1.3 liter aspirated engine, mechanical injection, 130 horsepower. So I bet 130 day. horsepower rips in this thing. Though. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It yeah. does. It's like 700 something, even if, if 700 kilos, a little bit less. Man. Is it funny seeing this with like Shrek, Nathel, like all the brands? Yeah, we grew the, up with the, the Volkswagens. Yeah. yeah. Oh what does it rev to? Um, eight. Eight and a half. Good That's question. Great, Great answer. Yeah. Eight. This is seriously one of the happiest days. <laughs> I like started to be like, man, my cheeks hurt. Yeah. I've just been smiling and laughing. It's so good. good. So these are some of the best sounding vehicles in motorsports ever. So can we? Period. 
possibly pop the hood and take a look at this. Can we possibly start it up and drive it around? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for a no. We've just been getting all the yeses. We just get it locked. Before, <laughs> before we get into it, give them one second to insert a 10 second clip of this thing just shredding. Of Uncle Walter just throwing it sideways through stages. <laughs> So this so is so good. I really love 80s like function first motorsport because like you start to see the newer cars are like a little bit more worried about like you know all this would match yeah. but this is like no, no 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 we needed that for that we needed that for that and yeah. that that's what works it's the brutalism of motorsports. it is it is brutalism of motorsport yeah. it's so nuts so there is no anti-lag and any, you know the only mm -hmm. was the first spring and anti-lag yep. as well but this is removed from that car here we just you see it it's oh, this so. one it's blocked here yeah and it's blocked fresh here. air valve taken off yeah yeah this is the one I want to talk about because I've never seen this in person. I've only seen it in magazines. I've only seen this in really fuzzy black and white photos. I don't know if you know the story about it. A little bit, but give me the give us the run. Basically, for the group B, there was um, what is it, successor group being being mm -hmm. um, targeted from from the official group B, yep. and it should be a group S. Basically, the, the Group S was, was, I think, the target was to have 1.5 liter turbo engines. But um, for now, for packaging such a car and just build one of those cars as a, as a, as a mock-up car, more or less, they put a Group B engine inside, like a regular <laughs> S2, um, E2 engine. And this is just a one-off, which was done in the technical development at Audi mm -hmm. on the hidden place somewhere with only a few people. Skunk Works. Skunk Works, yeah. Yeah, just putting the car together and see how it could look like. And we got the car with, like, 18 kilometers on the speedo or automator is it and then we decided to put it out and to see what we can do and we just more or less modified some hoses to get fresh hoses fresh fuel lines everything flash we didn't even over the engine we just made a big oil change and get it all set it right mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah it was a nice nice project we did and now the car did already like 400 kilometers or something hmm. far more than it ever did before we got it wow Oh, oh, man. oh man, you know us well, you know us well. Oh, turbo fans, Oof. Yeah. OG hey, turbo fans. Can make nice pictures a little bit. Can we see the uh, bottom side? Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Uh, so sick. Man. I think this one, these ones are the original ones. This is a good carry-on size. Yeah, I think yeah, we, we, yeah we, we did it. We, this is original pieces, I think. Wow. It was mandatory to have door panels and the dashboard has to be original in original shape. Wow. Wow, this is so cool. Yeah. I love this. Like, that they, you know, because it has uh, the intrusion yeah. bars on the cage. Yep. They still cool? made it, so yeah. it's like fitted. So it worked around it. Converted to manual windows, like. Yeah. Super. What is this for? Um, computer. Okay. If you read so, data telemetry. reading or, or radar data reading or programming. Oh yeah. Oh. This car right here. This is it. This is this is the car. Yeah. Oh man. <sighs> it was just a development car, right? Yeah. It has never been a race. But all people I spoke to at Audi Sport who were being in that project back in the days, they said, okay, leave the thing is off. Mm -hmm. because the car was far away from a stage. We can try to start it and to run it, mm -hmm. but I don't want to do it because it's all original in this car. Mm -hmm. And then immediately or suddenly you it destroy changes, the original It changes parts. the value of it, yeah. very hard to and change. Then, and then, and then you, you, there is nothing there. There's mm -hmm. one more engine and no more components mm -hmm. and nothing. And um, once the original pieces are gone, the originality is gone. So, so we keep it like this and we don't run it, yeah. unfortunately. So this was, uh, was a inline five turbo? V6, or was this, this, oh, this was the V6. V6 aspirated. No, but that was just literally just like the, the prototype car over there. It was just for packaging and development. Trust me, I got a close up. Wow. Can I 3D scan this? <laughs> so confusing. Oh, girls, probably. Yeah. Yeah, with an air feeding for inside. So Emmanuel drove this car too. Emmanuel Pira? Yes. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm good friends with his son, um, uh, Chris. Chris. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the other cars were 
Learning curves, of course, from 2000, 2001, yep. 2002, with the original, yeah, original parts, original components. You still see bodywork repaired with tape and Just things like, like this. Like how they came off the uh, truck. That's how, how the bodywork came off, and it's still dirty, and we keep it like this. It's great. That's how it should be. Yeah. These things sounded so crazy. Yeah. Because they were quiet, but they had like a whistle to them. Remember, yeah, it was yeah. like, like. It's like a toy. <laughs> Yeah, it sounded so incredible. You hear more drivetrain, gearbox, mm -hmm. differential, um, and not the engine. Yeah. And this was very complicated for the drivers as well, because the dri driver on a race car, you used to engine noise in terms of refing and shifting and mm -hmm. downshifting. You, you, know, you drive it more by noise than by anything else, mm -hmm. and you don't hear the engine anymore. This was, for them, very strange to drive, so you have really need to get used to it. Mm -hmm. That was wild. The yellow one here. It's called Audi Alpensieger. It's a Type C version, but this car is from 1919 and was basically the first motorsport car if you see it like this. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. So is this like a gas or yeah. kerosene yeah. headlight? Yeah. 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 That's insane. It can't be right. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. What is going on in the middle of that steering wheel? That's what I, was, I don't know. It's oh, fuel is it not? Yeah, fuel, fuel adjustment. Fuel Air adjustment fuel. and ignition adjustment. Yeah. No. Oh, wow, ignition really? And fuel angle. You have to adjust it for starting if you go up the hill and you it's see like it. A, it's like a choke in yeah, a way. Yeah, you, you don't feel the car pulling anymore. You have to adjust it a little bit. Dude, that's sick. Yeah. yeah tune, tune in those AFRs. Yeah. yeah. It, it's really, By ear. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really driving. You have to listen to the engine. Yeah. You have to feel if it's pulling a little bit better. You get a little bit more angle. Yeah. If it's not enough, you add more or too much. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a cool thing for You have the external shifting. Like problem on this one is that the, the throttle is, uh, is in the middle. The brake is on the right. Oh, that's oh, confusing. Wow. On the left, so you're messed up completely. Sitting on the right side, shifting outside, and having the throttle pedal and brake pedal on the wrong position. Sounds like a scumbag labs episode. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. We did something yeah. like that. Yeah, in the end, we, we rolled the car. Some, so we have some of a little bit of our motorcycles, like the NSU Delphine um, whale, like a blue whale called this one. Um, this is one of our famous bikes. We run it in Goodwood this year as well, which is a DKW UL500. It's, a, it's a, just the only existing model, um, motorcycle in the world. We redesigned the 500 as a run before, and this is a complete remanufactured car, a uh, motorcycle, from nothing. Like mm. every, every single piece you see on this one is redone, is new, wow. remanufactured. Wow. Engine, everything. In original style. In original style, as good as we know it. So DKW was a motorcycle company first, and then they started building cars. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was like one of the four rings was DKW. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they were one of the biggest motorcycle yeah. factories. In the so world. it's Porsche, uh, DKW, NSU, Audi, and that becomes Auto it was. In 1932, Audi, Porsche. DKW and Wanderer merged to create Auto Union. The four interlocking rings symbolized their unity while retaining their individuality. Each one of the German automotive brands were assigned a specific market segment. DKW built motorcycles and small cars. Wanderer made mid-sized cars. Audi focused on deluxe mid-sized cars and Horch was tapped to produce high-end luxury vehicles. After being virtually decimated by World War II, Auto Union was resurrected as a new company in 1949. Labor and financial troubles plagued the group until Volkswagen took over in 1964. The following year, the Audi nameplate was relaunched in 1985. The company was officially renamed Audi AG. Hold on, hold on. Timo just, Timo just told us. Uh, this top floor isn't that cool. This is just overflow. Don't worry, guys. So this will be quick. They have so much cool. They have extra spare cool. So if you saw upstairs, panels for this were sitting there. Oh, man. Oh, man. So 1988 Trans Am. Look, just look at that lineup of names. Hurley Haywood, Falter Roll, Hanstuck. <sighs> man. This is, this is my jam right here, though. Oh man. IMSA 90. Oh, good. 89 IMSA. All right, so today was unexpectedly insane. Like, top, top 10 days. I mean, first off, we're driving an R8, and we didn't know we were gonna drive one of those. Like, we showed up to Audi to visit our friend, Reuven. We said, hey, we wanna stop by. 
say hello, we're gonna swing through Ingolstadt, and maybe see the museum. Instead, like I said, they handed us the keys to an R8, so we should go have fun with it tonight. But then they showed us like this secret stash of car collection. Like, they've got the museum and they have all those cars, but then they have a ton of other special cars that they keep stashed away in a nondescript building about like a mile away. And yeah, like, it's just like all my dream cars. And I, apparently they all run, which is kind of surprising. <laughs> So it's uh, the next morning. Audi said they had another surprise for us, so eat breakfast and head over there real quick. Okay, this uh, seriously just keeps getting better. So we came to Audi to return the R8 that we had for the night, and uh, they pulled this out of the vault for us to drive today. Yeah, good times. Really, really good times. You can see I'm uh, pretty, pretty, pretty stoked. Thanks, guys. Welcome. All right, let's uh, let, let's go drive it. <laughs> I didn't even know this thing came out of a garage, let alone you could drive it. Well, yesterday we were like, can we drive? They're like, no. One of one. <laughs> one of one color. Man, it's like even Audi wants you to finish your Audi. <laughs> is this because is it motivation? Like the, the, the disc has come oh, even this early. Not a discussion again. It's not blue. It's not blue. No, this is not this blue. Is not blue. This is not blue. I love that the that joke is all the way to Audi and Gostad. Like yeah. this, that joke is here. <laughs> Was it instantly gramming it? <laughs> it's freaking awesome. It's like a dream car. And the good thing is, like, you know, the whole like meet your heroes. Like, you don't want to like drive cars. You're like, eh. I mean, it feels like the coupe, just a bit faster, and looks cooler. It drives like it feels like a brand new car. Like, if it today was 1993, like everything works the way it's supposed to. The seats still feel new. The steering's all super tight. Yeah, How many miles are on it? Or kilometers? 28. K on wow. kilometers, so yeah, it's pretty low. I used to have a Audi 200, which came with a pretty much a similar engine that's in there. Oh, okay. But this has a bit more power. So that one had like 220 horse, and this is 315. We didn't really get to like open it up just on kind of the streets we're on, but you can still, you know, it feels rad. It feels super tight together. Yeah, so we're at yet another special Audi facility. One that we're apparently not gonna be able to film all of, so I'll just have to draw you like a little diagram of what it looks like. Insane. Some of the best content we ever shot with our <laughs> eyes. That we can never show you. Had to stop middle of the road because that's my people. <laughs> that's on a barn. That's so big. That's totally my people. Barn <laughs> life, front of the house, letting them know. There's not enough cars in front of it though. That is true. But yeah, look at that pool situation he made out of hay bales. Whoa! Oh, ingenuity of Germans. Amazing. Do you see that? 